Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves supporter, Mr. Tim Spears. Tim, Wolverhampton Wanderers 3, West Ham United nil. Have you ever seen a more dominating Premier League performance than what we've just encountered in those 90 minutes out there? From minute one to minute 90, mm. they, were, they were the better team. It was sensational, Nathan. Yes, they yes were, it was, Timothy. They were utterly sublime at times. The, the, the only one you can compare it to this season is, is the Burnley game here back in way back in September. Mm. I think Wolves had 30 shots, but they only won 1-0 that day, and West Ham are a much better team than Burnley, certainly on paper. I was concerned tonight, as were you, that, uh, Wolves, I was, that, you Wolves, that Wolves might slip up with this one. You look at that West Ham 1-11, to yeah. really good team, and you expect a reaction after that Wimbledon defeat. But whether it was, uh, well, obviously they were generous, <laughs> the Hammers, and they were poor, but... Oh, that, that, that's generous to say that report they were <laughs> but dreadful. You've got, you've got to give nothing but full mm -hmm. and total credit to Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've done every, everything that they wanted to do tonight. It was, per, it was a perfect evening. Yes. It was the complete opposite to the last home game here, which was Bedlam, and they had no control whatsoever of what no. was going on. Tonight was the opposite. They, mm -hmm. they were in cruise control, mm -hmm. and they got their first clean sheet yes. since Bournemouth, and only the second since Palace away which feels like a very long time ago, October the 6th. But I've only kept two clean sheets since then. And that was all, that was Nuno's message pre-match, all about mm -hmm. let's, let's improve defensively. They conceded uh, 11 in five. So they've ticked every single box tonight. It was phenomenal. Dominating first half without scoring, and, and you were worried slightly that, that West Ham had to get better but they convert in the second half and, and that yeah. was the most important thing. First half, they could have been 3-4-0 three, three, up and you know they've produced some bang average first half performances this season as well. But no, they came they came out of the traps in not in a, in a massively kind of full-on style but just nicely controlling possession, easing their, mm. gently their way into the game and then they started to slice West Ham open and kind of prize them apart defensively and create a few good chances. Johnny headed just wide, then yeah. Don created a good chance nailed on penalty peel turned down mm -hmm. uh, Jimenez went close as well and a couple of others that don't spring to mind at the moment because there were so many chances tonight um, and yeah you did worry at half time I think they'd had nine shots to one or something like that West Ham had offered nothing and you kind of think West Ham can't be any worse no. but the start of the second half mm -hmm. again it was kind of gentle control but they just didn't really let West Ham have much possession and then again they started to create chances on like the 55 minute mark and then finally got the goal. Yeah, and, and look, if anyone was going to score, it was always going to be Romain Stace. <laughs> <laughs> like to have seen the odds, actually, on Stace. And it was nicely done. Nicely done. He just stayed in front of his man. He had a good shot just before as um, well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and Johnny had as well. Um, peppering shots that were at Fabianski. And without Fabianski... Oh, he was excellent, yeah. It's a Him and Declan Rice it's, apart, they were dreadful. Without Fabianski, it's, it's an England cricket school in the West Indies tonight. Oh, oh. It's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the nice second header from Sace. He didn't even have to jump. No. Um, <laughs> that's how bad West Ham yeah. yeah. were. They didn't even make him jump. He just heads it into the corner. Perfect. Yeah, and, and Jean Moutinho, I mean, again tonight, I mean, he has been the catalyst recently, hasn't he? Sexy guy. Oh, he is, isn't he? On and off the pitch. Knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He definitely does. He's been there before. <laughs> knows, <laughs> Plenty of experience. Knows his way around, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh. Can push those buttons. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> G-spot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still, let's keep it as an innuendo. Oh, no, no, You've no, just no, gone no. for it. <laughs> You're superb, though, wasn't he? We've gone from PG to 18 with that <laughs> comment. G-spot. It was superb, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> Can't believe you said that. <laughs> oh god, he, he was very good, Nathan. <laughs> um, I'm struggling for a man of the match. I've just been just been chatting to um, Wolves commentator extraordinary, Moutinho. Mikey Borjos. Um But he, even before Jimenez's goals, I was raving about him on Twitter. Mm. He, was, he was everywhere, Jimenez tonight, setting up so many chances. He, I kept seeing him on the halfway line. He had mm. five players in front of him, winning the ball back, spraying passes, spraying through balls for Jota. Him and Jota. Lethal weapon yes, of, a two. of a partnership. Mm, best than one. Um, best partnership since Laurel and Hardy. Or oh, Spears um, and Judah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, he was he was magnificent as well. And, and Doherty again. Mm -hmm. And Johnny was very Johnny's very good. He was and good, yes. Proper, his best attacking performance in a wolf in a wolf shirt, I would say. And then Nevis was okay. Den well, he's, on, he's gone goal bonuses soon, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Dendonka very good. Sace excellent. Mm. They, they all were. Yes. Except for Patricio, 
who was terrible. He had nothing to do. <laughs> he thought she was for him when he went pitch for show. He could have gone. He could have gone to Asda for his tea and come back. They still well, wouldn't have had a shot. Not going to no, he's not going to Asda for his tea. But look, 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 Raul Jimenez. I mean, he's got everything and see. I mean, everybody's signed. The crowd is shouting, signing him up. I assume that Wolves have got first dibs on him, and you know, just very much so. Whatever. They ask, just pay it. He is superb and he's well, brilliant. It's, yeah, it's about thirty million, and we've been saying it anyway. But by the week, mm. it looks like a fair price. Mm. Fair price. What is it about the start of season before seeing him play? No, totally. But he's, he's hit ten goals already. Yeah, we, we, uh, it's not in February yet. We'd be saying he, he should be aiming for ten goals, ten assists. Mm. He could have had two assists tonight. I think he's on six assists, ten goals in all competitions. Took that third one cheekily. Oh, yes, he did. He was taking the mick by that point. <laughs> As were Wolves. They were toying West Ham. They humiliated yeah. West Ham. Yeah. They're getting the old lays. Jotter going. and selfish. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. They were smashing them this way and that. To pieces. It was, <laughs> it was comprehensive. Uh, if I was a West Ham fan, I'd be a bit embarrassed. To be look, look this, is the West, this is the West Ham side. I've just lost to Wimbledon. They spent £100 million mm. in the summer and are touted to, to be rivals for for that seventh spot. And yet, they're, they're must, I must admit, I was watching it 60 minutes in and I'm watching it and I'm just thinking, this, this is this is the Wolves side who came up from the Championship. This is the West Ham I've been, you know, seasoned Premier League, you know, contender, top, top 10 every year. Mm. And it's just men against boys. It's unbelievable what you're watching. They're so comfortable. Yeah, so, so comfortable. So comfortable. I, I, to, like, like we said, I didn't really see it come in. Mm. Um, you, you've got to say West Ham, you know, bent over and... and Took it. <laughs> God, this is terrible. So, <laughs> Wait, you, so, you're the one who's doing it. I'm so don't, sorry. Don't, well, yeah, yeah, you should be. <laughs> oh, dear. And anyway, they had their bottoms smacked. <laughs> um, it was... They, they were atrocious. They, they were yeah. not a team... You, you, they're so inconsistent. I mean, they, they beat... Beat Arsenal and then lose to Bournemouth. And lose then to Bournemouth, lose to, yes, it's been get, a good week for them. Get hammered tonight, <laughs> but yeah, but it's an important result in the fight for seventh, which yeah. continues. And Wolves are in seventh now. Watford play tomorrow, and um, but it, we said before the Leicester game, you had Leicester who were then in eighth, mm. West Ham who were then in ninth, and Everton in tenth as your next three, mm. and they've won the first two with yes. scoring or scoring seven goals as well to the bargain. Mm. They now go with confidence to Goodison Park on Saturday. Mm. Genuinely thinking that they can make it three out of three. Well, I mean, they've only just scraped through past Huddersfield now that they got, yeah. beat, got beat here, but they've, they've lost Dini tonight with a red card. I think Baines has gone off injured as well. They're going to have plenty of problems and they're going to have a crowd that are ready to go as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I think it's still only three wins in 11 for Everton, so they're on a tail run mm. form, knocked out the cup as well. Mm. So Wolves can go there and take advantage. If they can make a good start, keep the crowd quiet for 20 mm. minutes, then have shown tonight, honestly, you'll struggle to find a more dominant performance mm -hmm. from a team outside the top six this yeah. season against a fellow contender for seventh spot as well. It was um, it was hard to believe at times. It was. <laughs> it and, was and, very comfortable. And then the good news is, although I'm sure Saez won't say it's good news, is that Willie Bolly's back now, no damage done, and, and, and he's going to probably come straight back in. I think, you know, unlucky, because I thought Saez was, was really good tonight, but yeah. he'll, he'll come straight back in at Goodison Park. That's a massive boost well, again. Well, I think, I, think, I think we all know that they're, we all know their first 11 now. Um, it's Bolly and for Saez, mm. and then it's, it's very much your first 11. Very much so. I mean, um, they, they, were, they were hammering West Ham nil-nil after an hour, mm -hmm. and I looked at the bench and I thought, he can't, he can't change no, this. No, no chance. There's nobody to come on that can improve this team nope. at the moment. Not in, not in the formation they were playing as well. No, that's it. It's taken a little, a little bit of work. That we've seen a, t a tweak with the formation, and we've seen Dendonka come in and, and really open doors up for mm -hmm. Matinho and Neves. We've seen Jota come back to form, um, and it's all, it's all kind of in place now. Mm -hmm. um, and things could be going much better, you know. They've got their, their two winnable games away from the FA Cup Court Finals. Which, you know that path has been mapped out in front of them now. Um, they're in seventh place in the league. Yeah. They've got a good run of fixtures coming up after that Everton game. It's mm -hmm. Huddersfield, Bournemouth, Newcastle. No, well, don't say good run of fixtures. They've got, they've and got Cardiff, some more games. You know, team, yeah, teams they should they should be beating. Yeah. So um, who needs a January transfer window? No you know, if, if, if they don't sign anyone, not bothered tomorrow or Thursday. And Nuno suggested tonight that they are close to signing someone. But if uh, we know they're trying to bring a striker in on loan, if they don't, mm. then they can just stick a video on of tonight's performance yeah. and say, well, we don't need anyone, do we? And if they are close to signing a striker, you think he's going to probably be back up for, for Raul? Because they're not going to play, you're not going to take Jota out that side and play two of them, No, is there's a lot of big names being banded around willy nilly. Yes. Uh, Olivier on, Giroud, desperate to come to Wolverhampton, by the way. On the, uh, on the old internet. Yes. But. No one's displacing Raul Jimenez from no this team. No one, no one. And, and Wolves don't want that to happen either. So it's difficult to bring someone in who knows they're going to be on the bench. Mm. You know, they nearly got there with Tammy Abraham. So we'll see what they can do in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. But as tonight 
improved. They are in rude health, uh, with or without a new side. The one blemish on the night, so to speak, or could have been a lot worse, was obviously pre-game, um, with the, the light show and all the fireworks that were going on. You know, um, with the light show and all the fireworks that were going on, um, and, and a firework going into the crowd. Mm. Um, not good, and they no. stopped it pretty quickly. Uh, but obviously a dangerous situation, but all is all is well within within the within the crowd, which is the main thing. Yeah, no, yeah, had it confirmed that thankfully nobody was injured. It looks quite nasty when you see a couple of the videos. You know, the firework goes into the ceiling, rebounds back into the fans. Not the first time it's happened here, by the way. 2003, a firework went into the crowd and hit someone in the face. So nasty business. The fireworks were stopped immediately. Stewards have gone to attend everybody, and thankfully everyone's okay. Mm. Okay, well, you know, more importantly, Wolves are in seventh, and we're, we're going to book some seventh, seventh heaven. Seventh heaven. We're going to book some European city breaks tonight. Try and get some, try and get some, some cheap deals. Shall I finish the video? Wolves three, West Ham nil. Follow the post-match reaction. Make sure you log on to Express and Star. Jack Cam.